What's going on everybody? Austin here. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the extra points week 10 NFL power rankings. So I'm going to start off this week, like I do always at the bottom of the league. All right. Lions at the bottom. They've been horrendous. Uh, Texans, then Dolphins, who just got a win over the Texans, but it's not enough to bump them above Washington, who even though Washington was on a bye, I had to move them down one just because Jacksonville got an excellent win against the Buffalo Bills. Uh, however, I still have them behind the Jets because I feel like if the Jets and the Jaguars played 10 times, the Jets would probably win six of those games, if not if not seven, eight. Uh, interesting about Jacksonville, though, uh, they're two and one in their last three games. Um, unfortunately, they got blown out uh, against Seattle, but neither here nor there. Um, and then their next three opponents, the Colts, 49ers and Falcons, they all have a losing record. They're a combined 11 and 14. Uh, my next set of teams, these next six right here, these are bottom of the barrel. They've got some bright spots. They've definitely got some lowlights. Um, I've got the Eagles who just took a home loss to the Chargers. It wasn't a bad loss. The Chargers are a good team. Uh, the Giants who just got a pretty good win. Uh, against the Raiders at home. The Bears, I'm not going to move them because Justin Fields seems to be figuring things out slowly. He was under duress an incredible amount last night, but still was able to figure out figure it out enough to put up, uh, what was it, 26 points against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Panthers, they, just, they can't seem to stay consistent uh, offensively. I mean, defensively, they've, I mean, they're, they're fantastic. It's just when, when the offense keeps getting sacked and throwing interceptions and and running backs are fumbling the football and wide receivers are dropping things. It's like they just need to put things together. They haven't had a great offensive game since Christian McCaffrey left. And now that he's back, maybe some things will kind of slowly settle in. Maybe the defense has to shift to him more. So the pass rush kind of stops hitting Sam Darnold every week. But, you know, who knows? Uh, the Falcons, who just got a really impressive win against the Saints, I didn't think they'd be able to do it. And the Broncos, although they – beat the brakes off the Cowboys. I can't justify moving them up because I think that every team above them would still beat them. Uh, talking about the Panthers offensive line issues, see right there uh, in their five losses this season, Sam Darnold is getting sacked on a rate of 3.2 times per game. And in their four wins, he gets sacked on an average of 1.4 times per game. So it's a pretty big discrepancy right there. That's pretty much getting sacked two more times. And obviously, you know, just getting sacked three times in a game isn't what it is. It's about the constant pressure that he's facing um, in those losses. These next five teams, uh, let's see, the Steelers and the Browns have both beaten the Broncos, and I'm sure the Chiefs will too. That's why, you know, I put all these teams above the Broncos, um, you know, despite their great win. Uh, the Browns are at the bottom of this, uh, of this kind of tiered section right here. Uh, then goes the Vikings. I know that the Browns got to win over the Vikings, but I, I don't think the Browns could do it again. The Chiefs, they're playing horrible football. They faced the Giants and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers in their last two games. And I believe that they're outscoring those opponents. What would it be? Uh, 36 to 36 to 27, which is awful. You know, if you're facing the Giants and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers, you want to you want to be beating them 50 to 20, not, you know, not 36 to 27. Um, the 49ers, they just they just they keep finding new ways to lose. The Arizona Cardinals were without four starters and still managed to win that game by a lot. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, who I'm bumping them up a little bit, not because, uh, you know, I think that the Bears are such a great team and that the fact that they beat the Bears, but because they've put four wins in a row together, you know, they're above 500 again. It seems like they finally know what to do on offense and no disrespect to Juju Smith-Schuster, but I just, he doesn't belong as a number one. And I think that team functions better when guys like, Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool and James Washington are all sharing instead of, okay, who's going to be the number two behind Juju? Uh, interesting about the Browns, uh, Baker, when he throws less than 22 times in a game, which has only happened twice, but they are 2-0 and and they're emphatic wins so far. Um, one of them was a Bengals game just this last week. 
Uh, but they're two and four when he passes more than 22 times per game. Um, you know, some of that has to do with, you know, the fact that like when you're trailing, you pass a little bit more, but also the league kind of have, has figured out Baker and the Browns. And basically the formula is the less that you see of him, the better that it is for the Browns. This next here is the, this is a section of teams that I don't see any of them possibly making it or winning the Super Bowl, but they could certainly upset a few teams and ruin their playoffs. Uh, the Seahawks, I, I've got them at 15. The Seahawks are one and two in the absence of Russell Wilson, but as you can see, they're only giving up 14.3 points per game, which is just a fantastic number. Um, and that includes games against the Steelers, the Saints, and uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who they just demolished. Uh, the Raiders, I have to bring them down one. Um, I think, you know, played the Seahawks 10 times. They'd beat them six times, seven times, uh, which is why, you know, I have them just one spot ahead. Um, but you, you can't excuse a loss to the Giants, especially when you have, a, you know, perfect red zone opportunity. Colts, I'm going to bump them up one. I, I knocked them down kind of heavy because I really thought that they could win against Tennessee a couple weeks ago. But, you know, as we're seeing, maybe Tennessee is better than we thought. Tennessee has five consecutive wins since losing to the Jets, and those wins have come over the Colts twice, the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Rams, which is just insane. Um, the Bengals minus three. You can't get blown out against the Browns. You can barely, you, you really, you really shouldn't lose to the Browns, let alone get blown out. And the Titans, obviously, um, you know, what we just said about the Titans, they're doing fantastic. I'm going to move them up one. I don't think it's sustainable. Uh, they had Derrick Henry for those five wins and they were able to win the game against the Rams. But uh, as we'll see later on, they didn't really win the game as much as LA lost the game. All right, so this next tier, they are all teams that could make the Super Bowl, but I would be surprised if any of these teams won the Super Bowl. Uh, the Saints at minus two, or the Saints, I mean, bringing them down two spots. Obviously, when you take a loss to the Atlanta Falcons, you know, that's, that's what you're going to get. The Falcons aren't a great team. They don't do a lot well besides uh, Cordell Patterson and right now maybe a little bit of Kyle Pitts. Uh, the Chargers, I get to move them up. They got a good win on the road against an Eagles team that has been really hard to bring down. And, you know, this is another close game. I think they won by three points. Patriots get a plus two, uh, not because they won the game or even because they dominated the game, just because they've been so consistent in their last five games. You see right there, they're four and one in their last five games with a positive point differential of almost 60. That's an average of 11.8 per game. Um, and that includes the Cowboys game where they had multiple chances to win it. It's just, you know, bad luck, crazy plays, you know, drop passes that turned into interceptions, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the Cowboys one spot above them. They just got shellacked by the Broncos. Now, I wouldn't move the Broncos up because I think that was more about a fluky, great Broncos team. But if you're a great team like the Cowboys and you want to be considered in the top five, you have to be ready for every single game that is coming up on your schedule. You can't take the Broncos easily. And so it seems like there might be some sort of internal, whether it's motivation or, um, you know, what would you say, like focus issue uh, that the Cowboys have. They're getting bumped down to, you can't take a loss. Uh, I think it was at home to the Broncos. And then the Bills, same thing. I don't care if it's at, you know, I don't care if it's at Jacksonville. You can't lose to the Jaguars. It's just inexcusable. You're getting bumped down. Both of these two teams outside the top five, they can play their way back in, but with the Tennessee Titans beating the Bills and then the Jaguars beating the Bills and within either a three or a four week span, doesn't look good. And then these are the top five teams. Um, Tampa Bay's at the bottom because their defense hasn't quite figured it out yet. And so far, all they've done this year is beat up on bad teams and lose to good teams. Um, they played the Cowboys down to the wire. They played the Patriots down to the wire. Those are the two teams that I would have considered good teams. They lost to the Saints, and they got shellacked by the Rams. Those are the two teams that I would consider, you know, great teams, good teams. Uh, and then they've beaten up on a bunch of bad teams. So 
you know, they do what they're supposed to do, but they can't, they don't have quite a level to raise up to yet. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, I moved them up to into this top five just because uh, Lamar Jackson is unbelievable. This is his third, this was his third comeback from more uh, than from two scores or more so far this season. Three times he's come back from 14 plus points. Um, he had 200 and what was it, 266 passing yards, 120 rushing yards, I think three total touchdowns. Unbelievable game by the league MVP. Lamar Jackson, the Rams get bumped down to because the Rams seem to have an issue facing teams that are good, that they didn't expect to be good. Cardinals going into the season, people didn't expect to be seven and one, eight and one, whatever they are right now. People didn't expect them to be this good. And when the Rams met them in week four, they were completely unprepared for their defensive line. And it got to the Rams. And that's the same thing that that's the same thing that the Titans did. The Titans got to the Rams. Uh, their defensive line just obliterated them. You can see the Rams outgained the Titans by 153 yards, but they gave up five sacks. Matthew Stafford threw two interceptions, which were both for all intents and purposes, pick sixes. And they committed 12 penalties for 115 yards, while their season average for penalties was less than four. So this is why I say I think the Rams beat themselves more than the Titans beat the Rams. I think that if the Rams play their game and they play it well, every team at their best, the Rams are the best team in the NFL, but they seem to have an issue being ready for the teams that they have to face that they don't think is that great. I've got the Arizona Cardinals moving up one above the Rams who I would have thought would have beaten the Cardinals. But last week with a, no, nobody's lost for the season. So this is why I'm able to keep them up here, but without Kyler Murray, without Deandre Hopkins, without, AJ Green and without Chase Edmonds, they beat the San Francisco 49ers 31 to 17. That is just ridiculous. The Packers went on the road to that same Cardinals team without their top three receivers and I think one defensive player and a total of 11 players, a total of 11 starters out. And they beat that team, which is why I ha have to have them at number one. But to win a game against who should be a decent opponent without your starting quarterback is incredible. That's why I'm going to maintain the Cardinals up here with, even with the loss of JJ Watt, I don't think their defense is going to be able to stop the run as well. Um, but the Packers, Aaron Rodgers is coming back. If Aaron Rodgers would have played one quarter of that chiefs game, I think they win. If Aaron Rodgers just plays the fourth quarter, I have no doubt that the Packers win that game, which is why I've got the Packers right now as the best team in the NFL. All right, guys, thanks for watching that video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And be sure to be on the lookout for our other videos coming out later this week.